Hi, I'm Kara, and I have a confession to make. This is very hard for me to talk about. You see, I did a terrible thing. Something that almost cost the life of the person I care about the most. My five-year-old sister disappeared because of me. I beg you not to judge me before you listen to the whole story, though, because it's really not that simple. Let me explain things from the start. My little sister Lana is the only person I have in this world. You might wonder why. Well, the rest of my family is gone. We used to have the most amazing mother, but she passed away. Yeah, that's right. Five years ago, we lost our mother after Lana was born. Her surgical delivery of Lana had a lot of complications. Because of a stupid medical error that put her in a coma and two weeks later, death stole her from us. Ever since then, it was just the three of us, Lana, my father, and I. You'd think that after a mom's death, my dad would have taken it upon himself to take care of us. However, my dad is not that type of father. I don't know if I even considered him to be much of a father in the first place. He usually spent most of his time at work and expected mom to do the rest, such as cooking, cleaning, taking care of the kids. He believed that raising kids wasn't a man's job. So... After a tragedy, he had no clue how to raise us. But instead of actually making an effort to try, he married another woman who became our stepmother. Apparently, replacing mom with another woman after two years seemed like a great idea to him. My little sister, of course, didn't really get what was happening, so she stayed out of it. I, on the other hand, was having a hard time accepting the reality my father had forced upon us. Even though I tried my best to communicate with him, every conversation we had ended in a big fight. I honestly couldn't deal with him. He was a hopeless case. As for the woman he brought into our home, she was even worse than him. The woman was pure evil, just like the typical stepmom in the stories we grew up listening to. She acted like the nicest person in front of our dad. And when he was gone, she was a completely different person. She screamed at us, called us names, told us how worthless we were, and the list went on. I never took anything she said seriously because her opinion never mattered to me. However, I got really aggressive when she went for my little sister. My little sister was so innocent and gentle. She reminded me of my mother a lot. She had a pure heart and every mean word affected her. Seeing her cry was the thing that hurt me the most in the world. That is why I defended my sister and tried my best to keep our stepmom away from her. But when I couldn't prevent it, I was there to make her feel better. What seemed to cheer her up the most were the stories I told her about her mother. Lana was always curious to know what mom was like. I tried my best to describe her and I showed her old pictures and videos of our mother. She looked just like Lana. With time, these stories became Lana's favorite topic to talk about. It reminded her that no matter what happened, mom was watching over us. I also told her stories of how one day we would be okay, because we would run off together to the city and do whatever we wanted. I promised her that we'd run off to Disneyland together, and her big eyes sparkled like diamonds. I showed her Disneyland pictures and videos, and I asked her to close her eyes and imagine us there. Little things like these were the only tool I had to cheer up my sister. Seeing her fall asleep with a smile on her face meant the world to me. After I made sure she was asleep, I would hug her and cry silently all night, holding my breath so I wouldn't wake her up. In the mornings, I would always prepare her breakfast, make sure she ate, and walk her to school before I headed to mine. Even though my sister was only five years old, she was pretty smart. She kept a smile on her face because she knew that it upset me to see her sad. Deep down, I knew she wasn't happy. Lana deserved a much better life than this. One day, I had to stay late at school. I was trying to finish a project and time flew by. I hated arriving home late because I worried about Lana being alone with my wicked stepmother. And my concerns were legitimate because as soon as I opened the door, I could hear my stepmother yelling at my sister. I stormed into the kitchen and I saw Lana cleaning broken glass off the floor. What the heck? My stepmother noticed my presence, so she quickly began excusing this insanity. She declared, Your damn sister dropped her plate and she's cleaning up her mistake. You monster! I 
screamed. How could you ask a child to clean up broken glass? I wanted to kill her. I was fuming inside. I imagined myself dragging her by the hair and kicking her out of our house. I was so angry. I even forgot my little sister was there as I was screaming. And before I knew it, I had grabbed a couple of plates from the table and I smashed them on the floor and said, No, you clean up after your mistake. I looked to my right and Lana was standing in the corner, frightened. My eyes filled with tears when I saw how terrified she was. I would have died a thousand times before scaring my sister like that. I don't know what had come over me. I grabbed her hand and took her upstairs to our room. Lana was shaking and I was too. This time, I couldn't hold back my tears and wait for her to fall asleep. Instead, I hugged her while crying uncontrollably. Lana held me tight and promised she would fix everything. When dad came upstairs, I refused to come out of my room and he was raging. Lana kept asking him to kindly leave me alone, but he wouldn't listen. He continued knocking hard on my door and pushing the handle with all his strength until he cracked the door open. He stormed in aggressively and Even though I was used to it by now, I still felt scared. My little sister hurried to protect me. She knew what was coming next. She cried, Daddy, no, please, but he ignored her shouts and he went ahead and slapped me really hard. One, two, three times. My face turned red and swollen and I tried to hold back my tears. He demanded that I apologize to my stepmother. I yelled, no way, I would never apologize. I could take the beating as long as I didn't have to apologize to that evil snake. I closed my eyes expecting another hit, but it never came. When I opened them, Lana was clutching onto his arm with all her strength and crying, please, daddy. He eventually decided to stop and he left the room. I crawled into my bed sobbing. Lana lay beside me. She looked at me with her big eyes, clueless about how to calm me down. But when I relaxed a bit, Lana began telling me tales of how we would run away someday to Disneyland, followed with stories about our mother and the way she watches over us. She was trying to take care of me the way I took care of her. I smiled and held her, and we fell asleep. I woke up the next day feeling sore. I turned over to see Lana, but she wasn't sleeping next to me. I went out of the room to check up on her, but she was nowhere to be found. I started panicking, where could she be? I stormed into the room I hated the most, and I asked my dad and stepmother where Lana was. They were half asleep and seemed like they couldn't care less, so I kept yelling until I caught their attention. Soon enough, they started looking for her, but to no avail. My dad called the police and reported her missing. Shortly after, the police came to our house. When they questioned us, I couldn't tell them we lived in an abusive house because I didn't want my sister and me to be sent into the broken system of foster care. However, I needed them to find her, so I informed them that I thought my sister might have tried to run off to Disneyland because we had planned it in our imaginations. The police search took place shortly after. I felt so guilty. My sister had gone missing because I had glorified the idea of running away. So she must have thought it was a better alternative to staying in our abusive home. My attempts of trying to protect her ended up hurting her. I rushed out of the house to look for her, After hours of searching, I felt like I was about to collapse. When I found myself five minutes away from the graveyard my mom is buried in, I went there because all I needed at that moment was to talk to my mom. I sat next to her grave. I was sobbing. I told my mom that Lana was missing and I needed her help even though I knew she couldn't really help. I mean, my mom was dead. Right at that moment, I felt like I'd lost all hope but suddenly... Out of the corner of my eye, I saw a little girl sitting next to a grave, not that far from where I was sitting. I looked closer. Hang on, was that Lana? I got up and started running towards her. Oh my, yes, it was Lana. She ran toward me, and before I knew it, she was in my arms. It's impossible to put into words how I felt at that moment. What are you doing here, silly? I asked her. She then pointed at a grave that seemed to have a similar name to Mom's and said, I'm visiting Mommy. I smiled. I totally forgot my sister was still learning how to read. This is not mom's grave, I told her. I took her hand and showed her where our mom was. Lana let go of my hand and sat beside the grave as she started talking to my mother. The sight was just heartbreaking, and her words broke my heart even more. 
she began saying that she came all the way from home to ask mom to watch over me better this time because I've been hurting. I guess that my little sister truly believed that our mom could protect us and maybe she was right. In a way, I felt like mom helped me find Lana after she went missing. After all, we reunited at the place where she rests. And this made me realize we'll always be safe and happy together. How would you describe your relationship with your sister? Tell us more in the comment section below and post your thoughts about this story. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel.